Hi you all. I'm going to break this um, uh, organic uh, study down. We're going to be painting an apple and I'm going to break it down into three movies I believe. Um, and I'm going to do everything in front of you for the first time. Okay. I'm actually out of town and I have um, borrowed a Wacom tablet from somebody so I want you to see how I had to download the driver for the Wacom tablet but I'm also going to paint this with a mouse some of you don't have access to a Wacom tablet so I'm going to do it both ways but the very first thing I wanted you to see is this is the 6.1 object drawing which is to be turned in by Sunday and then now you know if you don't get this done by Sunday it's okay try to get these done as best you can and we'll just go on from there and I have a new microphone because I had to borrow that too and if it's not working then fine so at one point I think with the Wacom tablet I'm gonna have to turn off the microphone because um, I only have two plugins for USB here but and here's the point um, I'm gonna um, this was supposed to be done and it's going to be on target for today I'll have it online by tomorrow and it's for the week of September 28th to October 4th so I'll be kind of on track with that but I'm gonna minimize that and we're gonna go right to the Apple because what I want you to see is that um, there's some texture on this apple and on the leaf. You, I'm not making you do a leaf, but there's texture on the apple as, uh, as I'm zooming in that requires you to understand the brush menu. And it's a, the brush palette that I'm clicking on right now, and I'll close it. The brush palette is one of the most um, un misunderstood palettes in Photoshop. So what I want to do is I want to click on the the brush palette and bring it up for you and then I'm going to show you how to do a couple of things um, just with the brush alone and then I'm going to go on to another movie for the actual Apple file but I have made a um, uh, a black fill in here that I'm going to practice with the brush on so I'm going to hit the B key for brush now I want to explain some things about brushes and in doing so I'm going to right hand click and I'm going to turn the brush all the way to hard okay and then I'm going to make sure the flow on top and the opacity on top are both at 100% if you see what I'm clicking on. Because I want you to understand brushes the best I can from the entire um, uh, aspect of brushes. Um, so let me click and let me see that back and then I'm going to make that brush bigger. Okay. Um, in the brush menu palette right here, you can actually click on the word brush tip shape which I'm going to do. That gives you access into something called spacing and the normal hardness that we deal with and the normal size. In other words, when I right hand click, I have size and hardness, but there is no place for brush spacing. And I want to introduce you, I'm hitting the return key, to what the brush spacing means. I'm going to um, hold the shift key as I paint. And I want you to see that I'm going to click, hold the shift key and drag across. These are a series of circles that Photoshop discovered a long time ago that when one circle covers another circle by only 24%, I'm sorry, 25%, that makes a perfect flow of paint, okay? And hopefully when I get done with this, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take the spacing from 25%, which you should always check on, don't ever make it less than 25%, but I'll show you what I mean, because I'm going to put it on 100% right now and hit the return key. Now, when I click and hold and drag with the shift key, I get perfect circles to line up each time. I'm just dragging across. I'm not clicking. I'm just dragging, okay? That's how Photoshop paints. It puts circles on top of each other. Now let me go to 50% and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So now when I click and hold and drag, do you see how now there's 50% of each circle overlapping the other circle? Let me Z back. If I go to 200%, I'm sorry, here on the spacing, you're now, I'll click and it'll, it'll skip a circle, go to a circle, skip a circle, go to a circle, skip a circle, where if I went in between, you'd see a perfect circle. Now how did Photoshop discover this? Well, I'm going to go back to 25%, which you should always, 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 always check on and hit the return key. Now, instead of, uh, and let me, um, I'm going to command click this up here in the corner, and I'm just going to hit command delete because I've already got it set up to just fill it back in with black so you can keep on seeing what I'm doing. But if I take this and just go like this, you can see that that's just a bunch of circles, but you can see the edge. See how the edge is all bumpy? 
Okay, now I'll do the same thing, but I'll right hand click and I'll put the hardness from, uh, from 100% to about 50%. Now I'll hit the return key and now you can see how the edge is soft. Okay, well that's because it diffused the edge and your eye can't catch the little bumps that are in there. Now let's go back and put this on the, the um, let's put the spacing on 100% so you can see when I drag, I have perfect circles that are going 100% the distance from, um, if 100% of a circle is the circle, okay, then you can understand that when um, I overlap 25%, you have the one up here. Okay, I think I've impressed upon the fact that that's how the spacing works. Now let me hit Command Delete to fill that up with black again. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go back and turn this off and I'm going to show you that there are plenty of times, well first of all, to get back to a regular brush, okay, you can click on this menu and you can clear the brush controls. Then you can just go back and click on a regular brush. You see how I did that right up here in the corner? Now I have a perfect brush where I can just come back in and I can put the flow at 25% or 20% or 10%. And let me explain that to you. If I put the flow at 20% and I pick a pretty red up in the corner, I want to explain this to you and make my brush a little bit bigger. If I click and hold the shift key and I paint across, I have 25% of the capability of that red that's gone on the screen. Now if 100% of that red is what the foreground color is, then it'll take me four swipes back and forth to actually get at that color. Do you understand? That's why the flow is so important. Now if I put the flow at 10%, then how many strokes going back and forth is it going to take me to get to 100%? And you probably are right. This is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because 10 times 10 is 100%. Now let me hit Command Delete again. Let me now put the, um, the flow back at 100%. So if I paint it, look at how it's just this red, okay? But if I put the opacity at 50%, that means that I could paint until um, the cows fly and I'll never get darker or more or to the um, intensity of the hue of that, of the value of that foreground color. This is what's in my brush. You see what I'm circling right there? But this is the only thing I can do with it because I've got the f opacity at 50%. So my advice is to always have the opacity at 100% and then only dial down the flow. Now I usually tell my students between 8% and 10% is what it usually takes to control the painting as you're painting on a canvas. Now. I'll hit Command Delete again to fill it up with black, but I'll take this away and I'll take away the apple. And I'll paint on this white layer that I have down here, okay? Now what I want to do is, actually I'll put a layer above it, so I can just throw it away. Look at how with red in my brush at 8%, I can have a really beautiful capability of even darkening that red as I move across. Now with a layer mask you can tell how I can get a pretty even flow and get that thing to work really beautiful. Now we're gonna, the next movie is going to be about Wacom tablets and the ability to take a Wacom tablet and um, play with the, with, the, um, with the pressure of the pen on the surface controlling not only the size of it, the thickness of it, but also the intensity of the flow. So I'm going to go to a little bit harder brush here and just show you that I'm able to get a brush that has a beautiful flow in it. Now that's only 8% and that's at the right intensity. So the harder you get with a brush, um, the more you're going to see the circles actually, I meant to uh, actually take the hardness up. The harder you get with a brush, the more you're going to see the overlap circles. The softer you get with a brush, you don't see overlap circles. So that's why um, you can understand now, if it's, as I zoom in, you can see the overlap circles here, but on this one down here, you can't see the overlap circles. So um, you're usually going to paint between 8 and 10 on the flow when we get off to the apple, although there will be sometimes I bust it up to all the way to 100% just to get the texture on the board. You will see what I'm talking about later and then we play with the opacity of the layer. But I'm going to throw away this layer and I want to um, demonstrate one other thing. 
let's go here and turn on the apple although you can't see it because it's underneath I want to get close and show you that there are lines let me move the brush palette over there are lines on here that actually go in the flow of the apple but they're not perfect lines there's also dots on the apple and I want to show you how to create a scatter brush a brush that you wouldn't have to go click 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 for each dot and then I want to show you how you save that so let's start with an ordinary brush let's just click this ordinary brush let me make it bigger on the screen and put the flow at a hundred percent and let me put the color at white so we can see what I'm doing okay and the hardness about all the way to about 80 percent on the hardness now here's a dot whoops I did something wrong oh I'm, <laughs> I'm clicked on the white layer here I have to go to the other layer okay there's a dot on the screen when I drag across I want a whole bunch of dots in one drag so watch how I do that I'll command Z back and then option command Z back so I'm going to turn on shape dynamics okay and in shape dynamics you can see how I'm going to watch my um, palette down here, watch this picture, this um, iconic display down here. I'm going to size this up to here so I get a whole bunch of different dots. Now, if I go back to the brush tip shape, I can take the spacing and space those brushes apart. Now, when I paint, look at how I have a whole bunch of random dots going across the board, except they're not, you know, they're not spread out. So what I have to do is turn on scattering. And in scattering, I'm going to turn the scatter up to about um, a lot of scatter, just um, a thousand. I'm going to go up to a thousand on the scatter, all the way up. Now I'm going to go back to shape dynamics, and I'm going to make the size jitter 70%, because I like painting at what you're going to see on the board. Now the bigger the brush, let me zoom back just a little bit. Okay, let me go command delete. Okay, the bigger the brush, the bigger the dots. Now that's with a brush this big, as you can see on my screen, but I'm going to use the bracket key and dial it way down. Now, look at how I have the brushes going on like this. Look at how beautiful that is, and with one little kind of motion down, I have a whole series of dots because I turned on Shape Dynamics, and in Shape Dynamics, I jittered the size, meaning I varied the size, and on scattering, I actually turned up the scatter to a thousand percent. Now, I'm going to go back to the brush tip shape. I have it at 200. The more that I space them, look at how the, I, I like to leave it at about 140. Now, let me hit Command Delete and show you. 140 makes not so many dots going across the screen. If I turn the spacing up, back down look at how I'm, if I'm at 50 I'll hit command delete so you see it I'll, I'll paint this up here look at how there's an intense amount of dots with the spacing at 50 let me put the spacing up at my 130 and I'll go down a little farther look at how there's less dots now let's even have it go up to 200 or 300 or 400 now I have less dots and you have more control over how many dots are going on that apple and actually that's kinda of pretty now let's look at the apple itself look at how those dots are randomly spaced so when we want to get that done we're gonna use that brush but now that I've worked so hard to make that brush what do I do with it well I click do you see what I'm clicking on do you see this brush presets right up here I'm gonna click it it now brings up a library and I can click on the library I can click on adjustments or styles and I just want to click on the library and then on the library I want to use the brush preset tab see it right there okay I'll close it and I'll do it again okay let's click on the brush presets let's go over and save our new brush preset now I've already done one I'll save this as Brian Apple 2 and I have Brian's Apple II brush. Now where does it appear? It appears now down at the bottom here, right here. See where I'm circling or where I'm actually touching right there, okay? That's Brian's second Apple brush. Now it also will appear here. If I right hand click, it's going to be right down at the bottom. It should have been right down at the bottom. Let me see where it went. Um, it should be down here at the bottom. It should have been down here. Oh, you know why? Because it's my brush that it might even be at the top. 
Let me hold my cursor over here and see if it is there. Yes, that's Brian's. Doesn't look like a scattered brush. There's Brian's apple brush number one, which is the one to the left. There's Brian's apple brush number two. Now, if you want to go back to a regular brush, just go back up this list either here or over here in the brush palette and click on the regular brush. Look at how the spacing is back at 25% uh, and you are so quick to get to go. Let me show you within seconds. Let me close this library. Within seconds, let me hit Command Delete. Now look at how I have a regular, whoops. I have, oh, okay, I'm glad I did this. I have to turn off shape dynamics and I have to turn off scattering. Did you see that, please? Okay, now look at how I have a regular brush. Okay, and I can vary the hardness of the brush again. I can vary the flow of the brush and I'm back to normal. Now when I want to go back, I'll hit the return key. When I want to go back to Brian's special brush, I'll right hand click because I've saved it in a preset. I'll click it right here and voila, I'm back to my dots. One more time, I click up, I click a regular brush, I turn off shape dynamics and scattering, back to a regular brush, or I'm back down to Brian's preset brush, which is a right hand click over here to the bottom, either one of these two, and I have my dotted brush, okay? It's really important for you to get to know the brush palette, so I would suggest practicing with brushes. I hope that helped you. Now go on to the Wacom Tablet movie. Thank you.